and welcome back to Emotional Mojo. So today we are challenging you to be your authentic self. There's no bigger proponent of that than YouTube sensation Jason Silva. He calls himself an inspiration chaser and his latest video is all about motivating people to march to the beat of their own drum via spoken word. Take a look. as human beings, as conscious agents, how do we resolve the inherent tension between wanting to realize, to fully realize our potential, to realize ourselves as individuals who stand with dignity, and resist the tug of conformity? How do we avoid succumbing to a zombified trance state of blindly following others in a herd as sheep, as hamsters in a hamster wheel? And, you know, it's funny because I think that the way we resolve that is by taking that plunge, by answering that call that Joseph Campbell talks about. There is no one map for how to live our lives. Reality is just a word, and you're not supposed to use it without quotation marks around it anyway, as Joseph Campbell says. We are all free to create our own reality, but it's only when we are bold enough to decondition our thinking, to transcend what Robert Anton Wilson calls the reality tunnel, right? This linguistic and conceptual and symbolic framework that constructs reality, this animatrix pulled in front of your eyes, blinding you from ecstatic visions of what might be behind those walls. You know, we are larvas who haven't turned ourselves into butterflies yet. And there's that great line by Nietzsche that says, those who were seen dancing were called insane by those who could not hear the music. Never forget the words of Jack Kerouac. The only people for me are the mad ones. Mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time. Those who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the sky. Wow, so that was YouTuber Jason Silva, hugely popular. Oh, yeah. And that message goes perfectly with our next guest because if you think happiness and confidence come only to a select few, think again. Karen Elizaga is an author and executive coach and she's gonna help shift our work attitude now that summer is approaching. Karen, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. What do you think about our challenge before we jump into First this? First of all, I love it because that's about what finding your sweet spot is. It's finding that authentic self, looking inside. Yeah. What motivates you? Because it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And you do. You help people find their sweet spot. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the book, but you're an executive coach. I mean, what does that mean? What do you do exactly? So my primary job is to help people to improve and enhance their performance so that they're performing at their peak level at work. But my approach is really holistic, and I look at everything about the person so that they can be, as you started, ha as happy yeah. and as confident as possible. Well, because it's not just about you know being efficient at work. It's no. like what else is going on in your life with right. your family, with your That's health, right. with you know your spiritual. I mean, there's so much that goes into who we are, and it That's all right. carries over too. You notice yeah. that? Yeah, and you know what? I just love sweet spot. Yeah. So <laughs> what does that mean? Name. Yeah. So what does that really mean in the context of how we live? Again, you know, if you look on the inside, you can find your sweet spot. You've got to dig a little bit. I think, Tara, you were talking about masks that we wear. Yeah. And if you can dig and find out what motivates you, what makes you happy, what makes you most confident, there's your sweet spot. There's so many things that go in, but, you know, being in your sweet spot is going to help you be as happy and confident as possible. Well, it's interesting. We talk about how summer's approaching and how that can kind of change the dynamic of your work home flow. And I'm curious, right. you know, with kids home from school, there's all these distractions going on. Chaos. At home. Chaos. 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 <laughs> so, especially for those who work from home, how can right. we stay productive, stay focused? Well, you know, when you're working, you've got to be working. So work hard so that you can play hard. But the thing is, if you're work at, working at home as a yeah. mother, you've got to carve out time for yourself. You've got to make sure that your kids know when you're working. You've got to schedule some activities for them, whether you're trading with other mothers or actually signing them up for activities. And when all else fails, shut the door. Make sure your yeah. kids mm -hmm. know the sign of when you're 
really and a lot on, of people don't phone. separate yeah. that like they assume mm -hmm. oh you're at home maybe you can do this or take care of that and right. you're supposed to be working right exactly no I'm actually working <laughs> yeah and it's our job to create order right to create yeah. lines mm -hmm. and boundaries of, right. so that we can be as productive as possible Hmm. Well, I'm interested, too, because you've interviewed and you have coached, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people. Do you find any one underlying regret people seem to have? The biggest regret that I've seen is people don't travel enough. And yeah. the summer is a great time to do that. But whether someone has been to zero places or 50 places, you know, whether they're foreign countries or just the United the States, States. They, the biggest regret was people have not traveled enough. Do you think Damn. that's wow. also a way of saying I haven't taken enough time off work? Also, that's also though. true, right? People okay. work so hard here in the, in the United States. People right. work so hard and they forget that they need to relax. They need to rejuvenate because when they relax and rejuvenate, yeah. they're best at work as well. Well, summertime, we think of confidence and being our true selves and our bodies, right? And there's a lot of pressure to look good, you know, sure. now that summer's approaching. So how can we maintain confidence in our lives? Do you have any advice? Well, we want our confidence always to be as hot as the sun, right? We want our confidence <laughs> levels to be like up that. here. But external messages we get from media and other people mm -hmm. take us down. So what you want to do is focus on the confidence from inside. Again, the sweet spot and confidence comes from inside. So that means, this is, this is the good news, you're in control of yes, how confident you are. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. So focus on what strength you have, what value you bring to the table. I think, Jada, you were talking yep. about the value you, you yeah. were bringing. Yeah. So people can check out um, forwardoptions.com, right, if they want more information right. on you right. and the book and you want to find your sweet spot, I would go ahead and check it out and I would pick up that book too if I were you. And <laughs> I'd love you to chime in on this because sure. speaking of happiness and confidence, how do you guys think women really truly view their bodies? Well, Oprah Magazine asked more than 4,000 readers who shared the good news, the bad news, and some inspiration as well. So here are some of the highlights. First up, when they were asked which body part they would magically change if they could, a whopping 63% said stomach, hmm. and then thighs, butt, and arms trailed behind. Tara, I'm curious, being a registered dietitian, nutritionist, yeah. is this kind of way true with what you see? Well, it I is, and, and that's where we see Americans, not just men, but a lot of women, tend to gain our weight, and we know that that's the most unhealthy place too is the abdominal obesity so a lot of women have a hard time they want that washboard stomach and it's hard to get <laughs> it is hard too especially if you're having children as well right, you know yeah. it makes a whole other aspect yeah. yeah but here's the thing I think we are looking at ourselves most critically so we are worried about oh what's this person gonna think about us but actually we're our own worst critics yeah so I say go to that party go to that pool wear that bikini that you want to yeah. wear because no one's I mean, honestly, attention. when you guys are at the beach, are That's you busy true. judging everybody? No, you're worried no, about yourself. Exactly. So don't worry about it. Exactly. It's not all bad news, though. Women do feel good about their bodies when the moment is right. 32% of those polled said they feel best when they have a fabulous outfit, and 14% really take a nice compliment to heart. But That's for the good. for the bad news, 43%, you guys, of those polled say they have skipped a trip to the beach or the pool simply because they felt bad about their bodies. 32% have skipped sex because of it. That's it? Dirty <laughs> <That's laughs> Out of these people right. polled. Oh but what does that tell you about women in general and what we think about we ourselves? We think too much we about ourselves. Do. That's the problem. <laughs> We've got to be our own best friends. We've got to, you know, love ourselves and embrace our bodies rather than comparing ourselves to some you know, Photoshop standard. standard. Yeah, yeah. And I gotta Shop tell you, your fun. husbands or your partners are probably really happy to even get to the point to see the body you're so worried about. Exactly. So I'm pretty sure it's okay. <laughs> Big thank you to you again. Thank you I so really much. appreciate it, Karen. Thank and you, you guys, guys don't go anywhere. We got a lot more coming up on Emotional Mojo. We'll be right back. <laughs>